South Carolina is a representative image of Southern heritage. As one of the very first settlements in America, this majestic state is steeped in rich history, a place shaped by events worth remembering, but some that many would rather forget. A land of beauty, a land of secrets. Much of the state's history before the arrival of its original settlers remains a mystery. Some of the area's unknown past has spawned a veritable library of legends and lore, with locals perpetuating stories of the mysterious creatures said to live there. One of the more unsettling stories stems from the confines of Lee County, an area named after the famed Confederate General Robert E. Lee. With a total population of less than 20,000, it stands as one of the least populous counties in the entire state. This insular, almost reclusive community is said to be home to a terrifying creature, one that is said to dwell in the depths of a dangerous area known as the Scape or Swamp. The year is 1988. 17-year-old Christopher Davis is driving home one balmy summer night from his job at a fast food restaurant. As rolling thunder from an approaching storm rumbles in the distance, Davis races to get home. While traveling along a desolate road, Davis hears a loud thud just as his car begins to swerve. With a blown tire, Davis pulls over to the side of the road alongside a large stretch of marshland known locally as the Swamp. Davis recounts the Swamp as a creepy place, full of weird animals, snakes, and alligators. Local parents and elders had long warned kids to stay away from the Swamp, out of fear for the danger that might dwell in its depths. Completely alone, with no others in sight, Davis, using only a small battery-operated flashlight, opens his trunk in search of the jack and his spare tire. Anxious, he works feverishly to remove the flat tire and situate the spare. He finishes replacing the tire, shuts the trunk, and attempts to start the engine, which then stalls. With his headlights switched on, Davis notices a dark, person-like figure sluggishly moving slowly toward the car. Davis recalled the figure walking erratically, as if injured with a limp. As the creature approached, it became clear to Davis that this was no ordinary person. It was much, much larger, and definitely not human. Now panicked, Davis repeatedly attempts to start the car, but it continues to stall. Suddenly, Davis hears a loud thud on the roof. With the mysterious figure now nowhere in sight, Davis notices his roof starting to cave in due to the weight of whatever just landed on his roof. Now completely terrified, Davis makes another attempt to start his vehicle, this time with success. With tires screeching, he speeds off only to slam on his brakes seconds later. Whatever is atop his vehicle is thrown from the roof. The figure rolls down from the roof onto the car's hood before landing on the ground. Unfazed, the dark, large, and imposing figure picks itself up off the ground and peers back at the car, visibly angered. Davis quickly reverses his car and speeds away. Davis races home and locks himself in his room for three days, unwilling to communicate with anyone. The teen is so horrified by the encounter that he wouldn't be able to muster the courage to even talk about it, let alone report the incident for a full two weeks. It was during this time that two other reports of unusually damaged vehicles are published in the local newspaper. Both incidents were said to have happened in the area of the Scape or Swamp, an eerily coincidental set of circumstances that would prompt Davis to come forward. 
As he expected, the police officer taking the teen's statement was skeptical. But still, he proceeded to produce a sketch based on Davis's account. According to Davis, the figure he saw was not human, at least not completely. He recounted that the massive creature approached him as he frantically tried to start his stalled car. The figure he saw was heavily muscled and stood at least seven feet tall. Davis claimed that it was scaled from head to toe, with skin reminiscent of a lizard. The officer stopped sketching, lowered his brow, and readied a sarcastic response with an air of conviction. Uncertain of what to make of it, the police department would ultimately dismiss the encounter as a bear attack. But local reporters reviewing the report weren't so convinced, with several contacting Davis for follow-up interviews and commentary. While Davis's dramatic but shaky account of the incident was fueled mostly by fear, local journalists were quick to further sensationalize the story and syndicate the article across newspapers nationwide. And it was one of these articles that would assign a new official name to the creature, formalizing its place among the growing cryptid community. A name that remains current now more than 30 years later, referring to the creature as the Lizard Man of Scape or Swamp. In the months that followed Davis's encounter, public curiosity overwhelmed the area, drawing countless visitors to Lee County in search of this terrifying yet fantastical beast. And local businesses were quick to embrace the enthusiastic crowds, leveraging the influx of visitors as a profit-driving opportunity. As a promotion, a local news station even offered a $1 million reward for the monster's capture. And with such an influx of tourists, and with so many groups of enthusiasts actively searching for the creature, discoveries of evidence, or perceived evidence, were quite common. But most reports were easily explained and quickly dismissed. However, less often, more convincing evidence would emerge. For example, one evening, a group of locals stumbled upon an enormous set of footprints found on the edge of the Scape or Swamp. Of shocking size and atypical shape, the police were called to investigate, at which point they created plaster castings for further analysis. Local experts were called in to assist with the investigation. Johnny Evans, a specialist from the South Carolina Marine and Wildlife Department, conducted a thorough study of the prints. After intense examination, Evans was unable to match the footprints to any locally known animal. He did note, however, that the footprints appeared reptilian in nature. Several weeks later, another headline-worthy sighting is reported. Kenneth Orr, an airman stationed at a nearby airbase, along with two of his friends, take interest in the local phenomena. Curious, but skeptical, the trio sets out in a cargo van for the area surrounding Scape or Swamp, with overnight gear in tow. They park their van along a secluded stretch of road and gear up to explore the area. As nightfall approaches with no evidence of the fabled creature, the trio decides to head back to the van to get some sleep. With his two friends in a deep sleep from a long night of exploring and drinking, Orr is awakened by a noise just after 1 a.m. Not overly concerned, but needing to urinate, out of an abundance of caution, Orr exits the van quietly with a flashlight and a pistol. Five minutes later, Orr's friends are awakened by a loud gunshot nearby. The van's driver door flies open. Orr now bloodied and carrying a small plastic bag, jumps into the driver's seat, finds the keys above the visor, starts the van, and speeds off. Minutes later, the van carrying Orr and his two startled and confused friends pulls into the sheriff's office. Orr claims that a monster attacked him, confirming that he was able to shoot and wound it 
during the violent encounter or produces a small plastic bag. In it, a piece of skin with scales and a soiled piece of fabric stained with blood. The sheriff looks up in horror, his face pale with fear and uncertainty. The next day, the sheriff would dispatch a team of officers to comb the area, while local journalists asked to speak with Orr. However, during a series of interviews, Orr seems noticeably anxious. After incessant questioning, one journalist begins to note inconsistencies in Orr's story. And a few days later, Orr would recant his claim, admitting that he faked the incident in order to keep media attention around the creature alive. He is arraigned for false testimony and unlawfully carrying a pistol. Though his two friends claim they knew nothing of his plan. The commotion during the summer of 1988 would soon die down, though less significant, sporadic reports of sightings and encounters with the Lizard Man would surface from time to time. However, despite the lack of ongoing attention, history suggests that the rumors of the creature's existence are anything but a hoax. In his 1929 book, author and anthropologist John Reed Swan writes about an account from members of the Creek Confederacy. According to this account, the Confederacy gathered a hunting party around a tree hollow one evening, their intent to smoke out a bear who had taken up residence there. The group approaches the tree and begins lighting fires. As the fires generated smoke, the group witnessed movement within the cloud. It wasn't a bear the party would encounter that night. It was something else altogether. A lone survivor recalled a great reptilian monster leapt down from the treetops and attacked my comrades. All of them were dead and I ran as fast as I could. The beast would encounter a mountain lion as he gave chase. That's the only reason I live to tell. Interestingly, the description of the creature in Swanton's 1929 publication bears a striking resemblance to the entity described in Davis's report from 1988. Both stories refer to a large, seven-foot-tall reptilian humanoid, inhumanly agile with the ability to climb trees. The creature is said to have greenish-brown, scale-covered skin, glowing, blood-red eyes, and webbed hands and feet. It has hooked claws, razor-sharp teeth, and long legs with a 40-inch stride. But how did the Lizard Man of Scape or Swamp come to be? What is this creature exactly? It's difficult to say with so few recorded sightings. Even to this day, we can only rely on public history, rumors, and speculation. However, this is one of those special cases where speculation mixed with some level of sensationalism, has added color to the creature's profile over the years, and it certainly hasn't prevented the public from theorizing about its possible origins. One theory suggests that Lizard Man's origin may date back to the pre-Columbian Americas, a period where much of the nation's history remains unknown. It's possible that the lizard man is a descendant of an unknown species tied to this period, an animal that once wandered the swamps of North America in greater numbers. Some theorize that lizard man could be an offshoot of reptilian evolution. Some paleontologists have suggested that certain intelligent species of dinosaur could have possibly possessed a human-like body structure further on in their evolution. Could the Lizard Man be one such creature? But much like the Lizard Man of Scape or Swamp, the truth continues to elude us to this day, and will be left to speculate until the day when an encounter with the Lizard Man can be substantiated. While there certainly had been charlatans like Orr involved in the Lizard Man's story over the years, there have also been plenty of puzzling circumstances wrought with unanswerable questions. Time will most certainly reveal the truth about this mysterious creature, 
but without a newsworthy sighting since 2011, the Lizard Man remains among the most elusive of cryptids. To that end, it looks like we'll just have to be patient. My name is Scott, and thank you so much for watching. We're a group of curious and passionate humans creating documentary style content for those who share our curiosity, ask questions, and seek to dig deeper in a world where almost everything isn't quite what it seems. We are Mystery Syndicate. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Patreon, and visit our website at www.mysterysyndicate.com. And don't forget to like our videos and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Whether or not you believe in ghosts, monsters, or legendary creatures doesn't matter here. Just believe in the possibility. From all of us at Mystery Syndicate, thank you again. We sincerely appreciate your support.